We're almost to the point where we are going to submit our application for ingestion to the Windows Store. However, before we get to that, let me uh, just show you what I did to resolve the issue that we left uh, in the previous lesson. Uh, what I did was I created a simple helper method called GoBack that contains all of the functionality necessary to put the application in a valid state after we move away from the uh, the uh, the search functionality or whenever we hit the back button so that's the purpose of this go back method we're going to grab all the sounds we're going to set that that title that category text block to all sounds we're going to set the menu items list view to no selection and then we'll set the back button visibility to collapsed then I'm going to call that whenever you click the back button or whenever the text changes in the search auto suggest box. So uh, if you clear it out completely or if you hit the little X in that, um, in that auto suggest box, we're going to first of all check and see if the, uh, that, that auto suggest box is empty. And if it is, then we'll call go back and then we'll continue on. Okay, so that's how I resolved that issue that we left off with in the previous lesson. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is talk about deployment for a little bit and how your applications will actually be deployed on the end user computer. So as a developer, you don't write any installers, any routines to install or uninstall your Windows runtime app, the app that you're building. Instead, you package your app and you submit it to the store like we'll do in the next lesson. So users will acquire your app from the store as what's called an app package. Uh, and the operating system uses information that you supply in an app package to install the app and ensure that all traces of the app are gone from the device whenever they choose to uninstall that app. So there's a file called the package AppX manifest file. As you can see, I have it highlighted here in the Solution Explorer. Here, let me get it up for you so you can see it. All right. And if I double click it, you'll see that there's a beautiful designer, but actually what this file is is just XML. It just has a nice Visual Studio interface on top of it so you don't have to deal directly with the XML. But essentially that package AppX manifest file is just a document that contains the information that the system needs to deploy, to display or update a Windows app. So this information that it contains will include things like the identity of the package, uh, any dependencies that it has on uh, other DLLs or other resources. Uh, any capabilities, capabilities that it requires in order to run. So I need GPS to run. I need um, um, the, to access the file system to run. Uh, any visual elements like we're going to demonstrate in this lesson and extensibility points, which we're not going to talk about. So every app package must include at least one package AppX manifest file. So the package manifest is digitally signed as a part of signing the app package. After it's been signed, then you can't uh, modify the manifest without invalidating the package signature. So there's uh, a certain amount of security then for the end user to ensure that they're getting the application that you built and that somebody didn't hack in and make some changes to it before it gets installed on their computer. So after the package has been installed and the package manifest file appears in the directory for the install package. Okay, so as you can see, there are a number of tabs in this designer. Uh, things that, re that uh, are related to the application as a whole, any visual assets, that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time. Capabilities, here's where I say, hey, I need the internet, I need the microphone, I need to make a phone call. That's what my app needs. Uh, any declarations, um, these are things that I intend to change or provide as a service to, uh, to the device or the system I'm running on. Um, content URIs, uh, and I'm not all that familiar with, honestly, uh, but the packaging is important from a Windows Store perspective, nothing that we really need to change unless we update the, the version number of our application, and obviously we want to change who the publisher is. Let me go ahead and change that right now. 
Uh, so let's go over to application. I think the only change I want to make is how it's actually displayed in the store. And then um, I might change the description as well. Um, uh, plays fun sounds uh, to amuse and amaze friends. All right, probably need a better description than that, but that should suffice. The supporter rotations, um, we haven't really tested it a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and select all of the rotations since we've programmed it in such a way that it should be able to, to handle it. But ideally, we would test this a little bit more before we just went off and, and made those selections. We're not going to do any tile updates. We'll talk about those in just a moment. But what we are going to do is spend time talking about visual assets. So um, let me go ahead and add in the short name of the application, UWP Soundboard. And where I want to show that name, which versions of the logo, all right? And it's going to say, hey, that's great, but you don't have a 310 by 310 logo. We'll fix that in just a moment. Now, before we get too far into this, let me talk about, uh, first of all, let me show you a good page that you need to take a look at. It's bit.do slash tiles dash badges. And uh, so you can see here on screen right now. This is a uh, documentation from the user experience um, uh, guidelines that talks about uh, the various ways that visual assets will be used on the device on the start screen or on the start menu. Uh, and I'm not going to take the time to cover all of these. There's actually quite a long list. But let me give you a few definitions to begin with here. A tile is anything, and unfortunately it's going to be off to the left-hand side of the screen here. But you can see, like, this is a tile. This movies and TV tile. This groove music tile. This news tile, okay? Different uh, orientations and... and uh, and what it, they do are a little bit differently because you can see that there are some, uh, the news item has a photograph, but uh, ultimately those are all tiles in a very general sense. Now there's something called a live tile, which is, uh, that which typifies that, what they called metro or modern user interface where there are, uh, there's information that gets flipped new information, different information. So if you have a news application, you might show three or four news stories uh, in sequence or give some sort of an update. But this too is kind of a general heading for specific types of live tiles. For example, there are tile notifications. And these are usually like if you see a mail program, you have six new emails, okay? There's usually a little badge at the bottom with a number that tells you uh, how many uh, items are new and updated and require your attention. Then there are things called badges and that will show uh, actually badges show you the number of items. Tile notifications are, um, are in pieces of information that are specific on a per user basis. So if I'm playing a video game and my ship actually lands at a planet three hours later after I sent it there, then I might get a notification, a tile notification that says, hey, you know, it's time to come back and play now. There's action that you can take. Uh, then there's badges, like we talked about, number six messages that need your attention. And then there's a peak template where you can actually see portions of the content, like maybe a photo that, uh, that will be utilized uh, if you were to then launch the application from that tile. So you get to peek at the content inside of that tile using a peek template. Um, and again, you can take a look at these guidelines. Probably the biggest one that is pertinent to us for our application is that we should only use a small and medium tile. So there are different size tiles, uh, as you can see here. Um, there are different size and shape tiles, and one of the guidelines is you shouldn't use a large tile uh, if you're not using tile notifications and if you're not using uh, badges. So we should only use small and medium, not the larger ones. Okay. Now you'll notice that by default there are a number of assets that are already kind of predefined for you. Uh, for example, this square 150 by 150 logo. You can see that um, that by, uh, well, first of all, let me go to all image assets, and that'll give us a longer list. That usually what you can do is just choose one of the recommended sizes 
or two of the recommended sizes and the other scales will be will be automatically generated for you now what I've gone off and done because I'm I, I wasn't really entirely sure what I needed to provide I went off and told my graphic designer to hey give me my little logo here in all these different variety of sizes that they ask for uh, and then I might come back and then remove the ones that don't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so I'm going to take some time here and change out, like for example, the square 71 by 71 logo. I might go here to the little ellipsis to actually select an image file to copy in this slot. Uh, I'm going to go into the app assets folder into my package app manifest folder and I'm looking for the 71 by 71 image like so now it says that it doesn't like my naming convention and that it has to provide some scaling uh, information kind of sandwiched between the 71 by 71 and the dot PNG do you want to proceed absolutely go right ahead okay and so you can see that it puts it uh, there. Now I can also add a background color. Um, I think we'll just add um, a background color of, um, well, in the case of the tiles, we want the background color to be transparent because we want to use whatever the system colors are. But for the splash green, let's use red and let's see if it'll accept that. We'll come back to that in a little bit. All right, um, so let's go ahead and continue on here. I'll choose a 300 by 300. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything that I want to change about this. All right, so let's close this now. And the, what I want to do before we leave this topic is actually um, right click the package Apex manifest file and just say uh, open with. And I'm just going to open with the text editor or maybe just the XML text editor and click OK. And then you can see all of the settings that we made in that designer uh, and you can see how they're manifest here in the XML all right and so that's really all that I wanted to do let me do this though Hold on, let me save this and now let me run it I'd like to see that's see if the splash screen pops up all right and you saw the splash screen briefly there that's really cool uh, looks like I'm going to need to also add a little space there. I forgot about that. Let me do that real quick before we conclude this video. And if you recall, I said this several times how I wanted to put a margin around this thing. Maybe um, 0, 5, 10, and 0. Now let's run it one more time. There's a cool, cool splash screen. And that looks pretty nice. Okay. All right, so ideally we would test this a little bit more, maybe for run it on some friends' computers, uh, other devices, test with the various mobile emulators that are available. But I'm going to wing it, and I'm actually going to try and submit this in the next video to the store. So we'll see you there. Thanks.